Hi guys, welcome back. So we've got our semi-finals, England, New Zealand, Wales, South Africa. The four strongest teams, you would say, going into this World Cup have actually made it to the semis. So in some respects, that's a good thing, I guess. We're getting our biggest games towards the end. Now, looking at selections, England, New Zealand, I haven't made a lot of changes. I don't think they will make a lot of changes and you wouldn't want a lot of changes at this stage. Otherwise, you're thinking they've got something wrong. Now, the one I guess you think maybe I, I would have changed was Slade. I was umming erring over Slade at 13, but there's pros and cons either way. Okay, he's not the quickest, and if you were to go for pure defensive uh, pairings, I'd probably have Joseph at 13, because I am a bit worried about Leonard Brown, you know, and Good Hugh causing havoc in that English defence midfield. But I think on balance, Slade does give you the passing, the kicking. He is a classy player. I'm hoping he's getting back to his best 100% fit as well. So I don't see, on balance, the reason to change actually now. Again, if you played Ford Farrell, I think they might be a bit weak defensively. And I am worried about that New Zealand attack, like I said. <clears throat> anyway, so going through the pack, um, exactly as we expected. Curry and Underhill retaining for sure, six and seven. Youngs, Farrell, uh, May, Watson and Daly at fullback. So it is exactly the same. Looking at New Zealand, now I wouldn't make any changes here either. Retallick looked absolutely fine going through the game. Um, Mwanga uh, and uh, Barrett worked fantastically well. I mean, they played great. They played some of the best rugby like I've said, I've ever seen. And it's exactly the same team. Let me know if you'd make any changes there. Sonny Bill coming off the bench, did get a few offloads in. He has looked like he's slowed down a little bit from his best. So, you know, could you argue for maybe a Crotty to get him on the bench instead of him? But he does come in and offer that different attack, big guy with the offload. So it probably makes sense to me. Now, Who's the favourites? New Zealand are favourites. I think I was listening on uh, Five Live, Dawson was calling it 50-50, but I, I don't really see it at that. You know, playing at their best, New Zealand just looked unbelievable. England have been very, very good at times, but I'm giving it maybe about 60-40 you know, advantage to New Zealand. If England play their best, they've got a chance. But when we look at matchups in the players, England aren't really getting the edge anywhere particularly. <clears throat> um, I think pack-wise, possibly they can hold their own. You know, it's going to be a massive battle. Line-out scrum, I've no idea who's going to come out on top, but, you know, that's going to be a biggie. At nine, possibly Smith. Well, I think definitely Smith gets the edge. He's playing top of his game still. Gets the ball away fast, but also he breaks, kicks, does everything. Youngs isn't quite at that level. Um, centres wise I think in attack England can be very very good I am worried if they have very low percentage possession they may struggle to contain uh, Leonard Brown and Goodhue like I mentioned back three well you could argue that the England wingers are more experienced but on pure talent I don't think there's a lot of difference plus Bowden Barrett does have the edge on daily especially in defence actually so you know possibly the edge there at fullback for New Zealand so I think New Zealand just tipping it on players, although it's close. England's individual players have got better and better you know, throughout the last couple of years, and they do have those world-class players that they were craving. So that's you know, a big leveller. And I've got a few questions. Do I think New Zealand have any weaknesses that England could exploit? Well, no. No, they don't have any weaknesses. But that doesn't mean you don't attack them there. Sometimes the only way to win is to take a team on at their strengths and beat them at their strength. And England are going to have to do that. So they're going to play the territory kicking game, see if they can win that. They're going to play contestable kicks. Test Reese, Test Bridge, Test Barrett. It's a big ask, but they've got to do it and try and come out on top. Try and win the scrum battle. Try and win the line-out battle. Try and win the physical battle, which New Zealand look really good at. You've got to do it. You've got to take them on. If they don't come out on top, at least they've had a go. I don't think there's a clever, different tactic they should really try. You know, I think they would just be doing it for the sake of doing it. Just take them head on at their strengths. Best team wins. No. Let's have a look at Wales and South Africa. Now, here are the teams I would pick. Again, not a lot of variations. And with the Welsh team, no variation at all. I think this is their strongest team. They, they had a poor showing in the quarterfinals. They can do a lot better than that. And they need to use that to fire themselves to perform to the top of their level. Because I don't think they're just going to be able to hold on against South Africa. 
they're going to have to fight fire with fire from the start you know and actually beat South Africa because they look mighty powerful indeed um, I hope Navidi is fit uh, he is a classy player you know he's got more offloads he's got more skill on him he's better over the ball Moriarty is a combative player and maybe they choose to go with him against South Africa but then he came on gave a yellow card away straight away so that won't help his cause in that quarter final in the backs they've got to have Jonathan Davis back absolutely even if he's 80% fit I think he's got to start because uh, Parks and Watkin looked you know decent club players but don't look anywhere near some of those international centres that we've been seeing in this tournament they've got to have Jonathan Davis at least starting go as long as he can if they're going to have a chance I do think um, back three yeah as is look good Liam Williams sparking the attack absolutely Gareth Davis sparking that attack uh, ball I thought carried very well in the quarterfinals and obviously Alan Wynne Jones puts in a massive shift e everywhere now this Welsh team has been battered and bruised the whole pool so they're going to be ready for this they're going to be used to this because it's going to be another unbelievably bruising encounter these poor Welsh guys I hope they get a good holiday after this World Cup because my goodness they're fought and fought for South Africa, I'm making two changes to the front row. I'm bringing Kits off and Mark straight into the starting team. You know, I think that extra power is where they need to go. It's their USP, it's where they're strong. And I thought they just struggled a little bit against Japan. Um, you know, they played uh, Umbanambi and Matawarira, and I don't think it went quite as well. So I'd bring in their big guns to start with. They've still got plenty on the bench, with likes of Snyman on the bench, um, and I am, am adding an extra back i'm taking away one of their forward replacements the extra uh, monster i think i'm taking away and adding elton yankees um, as an extra back replacement because i think they don't need the extra forward as they possibly did against uh, japan anyway i see south africa as favorites for this again some saying 50 50 i don't see that i see south africa have they've shown more attacking weapons than wales wales have been very solid but I'm hoping for Wales, this is where they wheel out their big attacks and really convert. Um, but South Africa are going to have to beat Wales for the full 80 minutes because we know Wales don't give, go away and they will not go away. Even Japan faded a bit against South Africa in the quarterfinals. I just don't see Wales doing that. Player by player, position by position, match up. I do think South Africa may have the edge in the scrum, even though the Welsh scrum is excellent, they may have the edge in the maul, it's just going to be a titanic physical battle for sure. You know, pure carrying capability, again, South Africa probably have it. Tactical kicking could be very even, both teams are excellent at this, you know, fascinating to see who comes out on top. It might not be the best to watch at times, but we could see a tactical kicking battle, and we could see that in the other semi as well actually uh, but I give it about 60 40 to South Africa Wales just need to step up they need to perform at a higher level than they have so far we know they can do it if everyone's fit if Jonathan Davis is fit they've got a great chance South Africa also will be pleased they're not facing New Zealand as will Wales both these guys know that by avoiding New Zealand they've got the best chance of getting to a World Cup final what you know a reward that would be so who do you see coming out on top on this match, on the England-New Zealand match? Comments on how you would change selection and how you think these matches will go. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you later in the week with a couple more videos before the big games at the weekend. And until then, I will see you later.